Boris Epstein. Is it Epstein or Epstein? Epstein. I just call him Boris. Epstein. Boris Epstein. For those of you who read the newspapers, what I call newspapers, you call links from X's. <laughs> the campaign, the transition did a report suggesting that he had has been accused of asking people who wanted jobs or or influence with the transition and the administration for very hefty retainers. The report was written by the person who was the de facto general counsel of the campaign and the transition. The report contained lots of allegations against him, which he has denied. Donald Trump did an interview with John Solomon about the report and about the accusations. Eric Trump spoke about them. Eric Trump, who is Boris's entree to Trump world because they're friends from college. He did it. He, he spoke about it on Fox. It would seem and, and, and it's been reported that Boris has clashed with many people in transition, including Elon Musk. It would seem that Boris is on the outs and maybe on the way out. But according to a senior uh, uh, or a official, I'll say official with the Trump team, Boris has not sought nor will ever seek a job in the White House or in the administration and that he is still on good terms with the president and that they spoke yesterday uh, uh, effusively about the Jack Smith developments. So, Sean, I go to you again first because you know a bit more about Trump world than than uh, Dan does. Is this just typical Trump world psychodrama and everybody has sharp elbows and, you know, everybody moves on together? Or is this represent some sort of change in Boris's status? Well, I don't think there's any change in Boris's status that I've heard of yet. And I think what you saw, I thought the big tell to me was Eric Trump last night who you mentioned they went to georgetown together that's how i actually met boris the first time is is as an on you know he introduced himself as a friend of eric's um and and so when eric came out and said if this is true they're going to be gone that spoke volumes to me um trump hates open grifting right you saw this with dave bossy in the past where where he was raising money on Trump's back. And there's a big difference on how it's done. Everybody goes out there. I mean, the, Washington, D.C. is full of people who suddenly are close to Donald Trump or his orbit, uh, who've never met the guy. But I will say that that Boris has been a unique person in Trump world. He has a great relationship with Mrs. Trump. He uh, is obviously, as I mentioned, close to the family. He has been a stalwart defender of Donald Trump through thick and thin. You know, he was in the he was on the campaign in 2016. He came into the White House work for me. He went on the outside and worked for Sinclair. He has never wavered in his support for Trump. And Trump recognizes that. So Boris has a little bit of a longer leash than some because he has been by Donald Trump's side through thick and thin, um, kept a rather low profile. And look, I, I get it. Welcome to Washington. People are trying to make money off their proximity to power. Um, I think that the key difference, and, and this is where like the nuance matters, is everybody is a consultant and will tell you what to do. Is there a direct quid pro quo? And when a guy like Scott Bessett is saying, I was propositioned, and there's some others that are in a similar situation, if they go back to the campaign now that they've secured their position and say, yes, this is the deal. And to your point, if Musk is saying, hey, this isn't how this should operate. This is where, you know, I always say in, in Trump world, you start with a dollar and it just keeps going down. The question is how soon before you run out of money? Um, I think because of Boris's steadfast commitment to defending Donald Trump, he's probably got a little bit of a longer leash, as I mentioned. But if, if more allegations come out and people were to go on the record, that's going to make it a lot more difficult. Um, the, the difference is, I would say, whether it's Corey Lewandowski or Dave Bossy or a couple others, you normally get sent for a timeout. Um, and, and you know, Boris, again, this isn't just a, he, he might be making money. Who knows what's true and what's not. But I think he, he, he is remembered by the family as someone that has been very, very loyal. Dan, anything you want to say about this? I just that I think what Sean said about the nuance is right. You know, there are tons of lobbyists around who will say I'm close to this advisor or that advisor or a member of the Trump family. But there's a huge difference if you are literally pulling people aside after they're interviewed and saying you need to pay me to, 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 to stay in the race for a job. That is a different level. And look, if you're the Trump world, you know, corruption and allegations of corruption swirled around you the first time. I, I just can't imagine 
that you want more of these stories. I mean, on some level you shrug and just, you know, it's like the Star Wars bar that there's always happening, but you don't want this type of stuff out there. Yeah. So, um, as I said, Boris has denied these accusations. And as Sean said, you know, this, this, you know, this stuff happens. There is a difference. If the accusations were true, he's in the room. He's not just somebody like on the sidelines. He's in the room making decisions. I will say that I don't know how long Elon Musk is going to be in Donald Trump's orbit, but I bet Boris is in his orbit longer than Elon Musk. Yeah. I'll also say that because we dealt with two of the least leaking campaigns of all time, and really three, Biden, Harris, and Trump, very little is known about some of the most important events that occurred during this campaign. On the Trump side, Susie Wiles, amongst the many things she did, was manage a process where her candidate had to go to court, had to deal with the bandwidth issues related to travel and time and everything else and organize the legal team. Because the legal team, if you've ever dealt with lawyers in a political situation, the lawyers just care about the law. Their job is to keep their client out of prison, right? The political people sometimes have other interests. And to, and and the way that she and, and Boris managed those two competing interests is something that contributed mightily to Donald Trump winning the nomination and winning the general election, and Donald Trump is well aware of that. He, he dealt with a bunch of lawyers who had varying degrees of political savvy, and the person who was at, often at the table and in the meetings and coordinating it was Boris, who has both political savvy and legal understanding, and that made a huge difference, and Donald Trump is, I, I believe from my sources, is well aware of that, well aware. Now, as the things developed yesterday, his liberty was not dependent on whether Jack Smith got convictions or not. But for a very long period of time, the question of his liberty related to could he run for president and win the nomination and win the general election and continue to stall on the legal cases. And he did. And again, lots of people contributed to that, both on the campaign and in the legal team. The person who is at the fulcrum of that is the person now who faces these accusations. As Sean said, if they're public, if people want to want to take him down by going on the record rather than in this report, that could make a difference. But I, as I said, I think I don't think he's going to leave Trump world over this. But maybe he'll have a bossy like Time 